Hello everyone, my name is Perla and I'm a fifth year health sciences student and also a health peer with SFU Health and Counseling. Today we will be talking about imposter syndrome and self-compassion which are one of the building blocks of cultivating resilience. But first, we would like to make a land acknowledgement and respectfully acknowledge that these videos were filmed on the unceded traditional Coast Salish lands including the Sabletooth, Coquitlam, Squamish, and Musqueam nations. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Lara Aknan and I am an associate professor in the psychology department at SFU. I'm also the director of the Helping and Happiness Lab. Um, I've been a faculty member for several years now um, and had many experiences with imposter syndrome. In fact, I don't think I've completely shaken um, this kind of fear or anxiety. Um, but one of the most memorable experiences for me is I think um, when I started graduate school, I'm pretty sure that my GRE scores were lower than most of my cohort entering that year, um, although I never really asked, and to be honest, I don't remember my GRE scores. Um, but I remember feeling quite insecure about um, my credentials beginning graduate school, and um, I, had, I, I remember for the first year of my graduate school career, every time I handed in an assignment, I was nearly certain that this was the opportunity or this was the occasion on which I would be called out and the other the faculty members would realize that they made a mistake letting me into the program and so i remember every stats assignment every discussion question every meeting when i um you know raised my shaking hand to make a point i felt like um this is when they figure out i don't belong this is when they figure out they made a mistake letting me into the program hello my name is dr brian fraser i'm a senior lecturer in computing science and today i'd like to talk about imposter syndrome so to me, imposter syndrome means the feeling like you don't belong in the position that you've earned. Um, I've had this a few times in my life. For example, in third year computing science course in undergrad, I was taking a fourth year computing science course. And I looked around the room and thought, wow, all these other students must know things I do not. I really kind of felt out of place, like I was somehow sneaking into the room and I was worried they were going to catch me and throw me out. Um, and throughout the semester, I came to realize that I actually belong there. I, I could do the work and I could be part of that class community. Another time when I felt the same way was my first day of teaching. I remember thinking, what right do I have to tell these students about this material? What do I know about teaching? And through hard work, I realized that, hey, I actually had something to offer and that I could kind of deliver the knowledge that the students needed. But I still felt like I didn't really belong. How can we overcome imposter syndrome? Um, I don't know if there's an easy route, and if there is, I haven't figured it out myself. Um, but I think one of the methods or, or techniques that I try is um, seeking out friends and family when I am feeling a large sense of self-doubt. I usually turn to these friends and family members that have been supports of mine over the years, um, and I let them know that I'm, I'm uncertain that I can take on this big task. Um, I let them know that I'm anxious and I feel like I don't belong. And usually these people who know me so well, um, who know my strengths and my weaknesses, can give me honest feedback. Um, sometimes they'll tell me, you know what, Lara, this sounds like a really big task. Maybe it's something you don't want to take on right now, or maybe it's unreasonable, or maybe this isn't well suited to you. Um, but other times I think these people know my strengths and my weaknesses and um, can give me some honest feedback and tell me, you know, this is, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. Your concerns, your fears, your anxieties are overblown. Um, and you have the strengths or the talents or the perseverance to do what this, uh, what is required of you. And so um, I feel like those, those opportunities, the, those insights and, and that support really help um, me try to address um, imposter syndrome and, and help me kind of work through these anxieties and fears um, that still creep up. I, I still feel this. Um, and um, I think it might just be a natural part of, of growth and, and self-reflection that, you know, sometimes we're uncertain about how we can handle the world, but um, I think what's important is that we kind of consult with ourselves and those we trust to figure out if we feel like we're capable and, and take a chance and um, believe in ourselves. So a couple tips to combating imposter syndrome when you feel it. First, realize you've earned it. Um, some people talk about fake it till you make it. I like be it till you feel it. By continuing to do the tasks that you're there to do, it'll build your confidence and you realize, hey, I am able to do this. I'm able to do it well. This is a position I've earned. And second, sit at the table. 
If you think about a meeting where people are deciding something big, you've got all the people that are making the decision in the middle, and at the edge, you've got the people, maybe the advisors. Well, you've made it. You get to sit at the table, both physically and metaphorically. So as you're there, contribute. Use your voice to state your opinions and to really be part of it. Um, you've earned your way there, and so your voice matters. So, good luck. It is important to practice self-compassion in situations where you might perceive inadequacy, failure, or general suffering. Self-compassion does not mean letting yourself off the hook, but rather being kind and supportive with yourself. In summary, to address feelings of imposter syndrome, own your successes. Understand the difference between your thoughts, negative self-talk, and reality. Do not compare yourself to others. Comparisons can be biased, unproductive, and disempowering. Everyone is different, and you have something unique and valuable to offer to the world. Do not let fear get in the way of your aspirations. Continue to be ambitious and set goals. Celebrate each milestone and achievement, even the small ones. Prove your inner imposter wrong. I hope you learned a little bit about imposter syndrome. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter at SFUHCS and check out our website. Thank you for watching.